as stated in the previous lesson, in data science we use the word space to refer to the mathematical space. In this video, we will discuss more about how data space is formed and what is high dimensional space. Hello, I am Dr. Shahriar Hossein. You are watching a video of our data science lecture series. Let us discuss how space is formed from data. Consider a data set like this one where we have two columns, salary and age, and five points or five rows for the employees of a company. The names of the employees are Jane, John, Delilah, Dave, and Ellen. This is a two-dimensional data set. It will form a space with two axes. One of the two axes will be age and the other one will be salary. Let us put age in the horizontal axis and salary in the vertical axis. Notice that each object of the data set has become a point in the space using age and salary coordinates. The space is two-dimensional because the data set is two-dimensional. That is, the data set has two features. The dimension of a data set actually refers to the axis in the space that this data set creates. In this example, Jane and Dave have the same salary. That is why their positions in the vertical axis, that is the salary axis, are the same. Dave is one year older than Jane. That is why the marker for Dave is a bit right to the marker of Jane, indicating that Dave is slightly older than Jane. With three features, salary, age, and years of service, the data becomes three-dimensional. As a result, our data space will become three-dimensional containing three axes. We can put our points which are the rows of this data in a three-dimensional space like this one. You might have recalled by this time that the space we are talking about is the Euclidean space from geometry, where there is an origin point with zero values for any axis. There are two parts along any axis. One side contains positive values and the other side contains all negative values. That is, the data values in a table can even be negative. The most common Euclidean space used in geometry are two-dimensional and three-dimensional spaces. We have already seen a two-dimensional data set and a three-dimensional data set in this video. We know how the corresponding Euclidean spaces are formed. What happens if we have four features? Practically, we have a four-dimensional space with four axes. However, we do not have the capacity to visualize the four-dimensional space because we practically live in a three-dimensional space. Note that we still have the data and the corresponding four-dimensional space that we can use for any mathematical operations. We just cannot visualize the space. Same about five features or a five-dimensional space. There can be a five-dimensional space resulting from a five-dimensional data set. But we cannot visualize anything with more than three dimensions because our eyes can only process up to three dimensions. If we have 100 features, then we have a 100-dimensional space that has 100 axes. If we have 1,000 features, then we have a 1,000-dimensional data set with 1,000 axes in the corresponding space. In general, if we have k features, we have a k-dimensional data set and the corresponding space has k axes. Let us discuss what is a high-dimensional space. A data set with a number of dimensions greater than 3 can be referred to as high-dimensional data. However, the phrase high-dimensional data is vague and is not used for small number of dimensions like 
four or five or six dimensions. When you have text data, you can consider that you have several thousand to several tens of thousands of dimensions. In that case, you will probably call a data set with 20,000 to 30,000 or to 40,000 features a high dimensional data set. If you have data that stores health information of people, you can consider that you have a few tens of dimensions to a little over a hundred dimensions for a data set built with health information of people, you may find 200 dimensions a good enough quantity to call it a high dimensional data set. Many of the algorithms we will learn are highly affected by the number of dimensions or number of features of the data. This is why the number of dimensions or features in data is an important factor in data science. You might ask, isn't the number of rows or objects um, an important factor as well? Yes, it is. But it is naturally expected that the more objects you have, the more time an algorithm will take. If we have more features, the runtime sometimes increases quite unexpectedly. You will hear things like, um, this algorithm is good for a large data set with low number of features. Or you might hear a statement like, this algorithm works so well even for high dimensional datasets. What I am saying is the phrase big data in data science is not only contributed by the number of objects but also by the number of features or dimensions. I'll see you soon next time.